welcome to the next talk. Um, so we have Andre, who's going to be talking to us about uh, blockchain, Ethereum, smart contracts, and chain links. So I'll hand it over to him. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, so today we have uh, like approximately 30 minutes to do some uh, small hands-on, actually, workshop slash bootcamp, where I will basically teach you, if you want to grab your laptops, uh, how you can use Chainlink price fits in your smart contracts. We are going to use Remix IDE because this is like the, the easiest way for these uh, in-person slash online workshops. And uh, we have like, I think, five or ten minutes for q and I will try to squeeze that time in so we can like have more time to do the actual bootcamp. And you can ask me your questions uh, during the session or at the end. I'll try to, to help you out, even to come to your, to your like deck place, whatever, to see if your code is not running properly. Etc. Etc. So, uh, my name is uh, Andrei Rakic. I'm one of the developer advocates at, for Chainlink Protocol at Chainlink Labs. Basically, doing the same job as Patrick Collins, Harry Papacrisio, and all of those famous guys. So, this is my uh, Twitter handle. If you want to reach me out to talk anything Chainlink related, smart contract related, um, basically, I'll try to post educational threads as well on Twitter to share some useful YouTube videos, blogs, etc. Uh, okay, so let's start. So uh, today I'm going to try to explain to you how you can use Chainlink data feeds in your smart contracts written in Solidity on Avalanche Fuji uh, testnet, C-Chain of course. So before actual code along, let's uh, explain uh, why there's a need for Chainlink price feeds in the first place. So because of the numerous hacks and uh, uh, projects that basically got wrecked in the past, uh, Chainlink created this, this, um, this system, basically. So uh, if you want to securely grab uh, off-chain data or price of any, uh, any given asset, basically, not just crypto coins or tokens, uh, there's a several steps that you need to um, to take. So basically, first of all, don't ever lose uh, use low liquidity tokens. Uh, why is that? Because if a token has a low liquidity, that means that it's not traded a, a lot, that means there's, there's no projects basically using it, and you're at risk to get manipulated because if there's a low liquidity token on some decks, uh, it can be easily manipulated either by adding enormous liquidity to one side of the pool or making conjecture swaps, whatever, you're basically at risk to got wrecked. Uh, second tip is basically to use Chainlink because many notable projects like Aave or Synthetic, uh, Synthetics are already using Chainlink and they're like pretty secure. So you're, this is like a simple bet to you just use what's currently the industry standard. Uh, also there's like so-called TWAPs or TWAP oracles. And if you use those oracles, you need to be very careful. You need to know uh, exactly what you are doing to avoid being wrecked. Because they're pretty uh, easy to manipulate as well. Uh, because, you know, uh, DEXs are, are decentral exchange. They're not, they're not decentralized oracles. So their main purpose is to do exchanges for us, not to provide us prices. And therefore, because of the, their nature, uh, those prices can be easily manipulated because with the DEXs, they have like a, a mathematical formulas how they calculate the prices. And therefore, we can uh, create a mechanism to manipulate those prices even in a single block with flash loans, etc. There was several Twitter threads on this topic as well. And finally, I cannot stress this hard enough, but if you're using DEX as your source of Oracle price, whatever, that's basically a centralized source of truth, if you think about it. Because you're using uh, only one single entity, whether that's the best DEX uh, uh, in, in an ecosystem, but still it's a centralized one, uh, one place for which you're like, getting prices. Uh, and, and that's like... Uh, bad because like we are tending to decentralize everything in Web3 space. So uh, how Chainlink solves all of these pro problems? Basically with the data feeds. So with data feeds, uh, we have a decentralized oracle of networks called Dawn. And basically Dawn is not a blockchain, but is a, it is a decentralized network because it needs to reach a consensus. And it's uh, composed of, of many nodes uh, which can have 
and usually have not one but multiple sources of DEFT prices. So one Chainlink node can use some DEX uh, as its source of price, then can use some CFI protocol, some uh, other DEX as well, and then can like uh, provide its uh, price to the to the actual Oracle network. Um, um, as its own. But I'll, I'll show you the, the in the next slide the, the maybe I can do it like right now. Basically, so imagine that you're wanting you want to to get like the latest price of whatever Avex token, for example, Avex coins, whatever. And uh, you have like your smart contract calling the the, the aggregator contract, uh, which communicates with a decentralized Oracle network or Don. So each of these nodes can have multiple sources of truth. For example, as I said, like several DEXs, taxes, whatever, and they're incentivized to do the honest work because uh, they receive link tokens as a passive income for that work, or they uh, can be banned or kicked out of the network if they try to, to do the bad work, basically. So all of these nodes will, will now provide via uh, OCR network, and I will explain that later as well, uh, their uh, current price at the moment, their vision of the current price. And then the network itself will perform an aggregation, uh, aggregational uh, algorithm to determine the actual price, and it will return the actual price to the calling smart contract on chain. Uh, I mentioned this OCR. Basically, uh, it's uh, a new, new thing. I think we, uh, the Chainlink Labs announced this like a couple months ago. Basically, off-chain reporting means that uh, previously, uh, all of these nodes uh, need, uh, need to submit their prices on-chain, and then the, the actual price uh, was submitted one more time uh, on-chain as well. But now, uh, with this P2P network, all of these nodes communicate between themselves, and then uh, they submit like final price on chain. So imagine you're running um, some online shop business on Amazon, and someone orders to like, uh, let's say, ten mobile phones. You're selling mobile phones, and with the previous um, model, uh, you'll basically pack uh, each single of these mobile phones. Uh, add like post timestamp and send it, and now you can pack all of this uh, ten phones in a single package and ship it. So it's a huge gas and data saving savings. So uh, this was the intro. We'll now try to actually uh, write our first price with consumer. Uh, you can open Remix ID, and in approximately 15 to 20 minutes, I will try to explain to you how you can. Uh, get the latest price uh, using Chainlink price fits in your smart contract. Uh, give me a sec. Okay. I hope you can hear me still. Yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, so we are inside the Remix ID. I split my screen on two sides. Uh, can you see this, or I should zoom it a bit? Uh, okay, uh, let's Avalanche Hacker House. Let's create a new actually a folder, a file. Sorry. Uh, 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 um, let's do it like this. A uh, new file. Uh, and let's call it uh, price feed consumer dot sol. Okay. So inside this price feed consumer dot sol, uh, I can zoom this a bit. Uh, I can I will collapse this so we can have more space basically. Okay. So the first thing is basically to go to dogs the chain link and follow up the the official guide. So there's like a several. 
uh, sentences, this explaining data feeds in general. And then if we scroll a bit down, we can see our first demo contract. So uh, the first thing is that we need to specify our Solidity version. Sorry. I hope you can still hear me. So Pragma Solidity, Solidity. We can use 0 0.8, 0 0.0. I think that's the safest bet. And then we can create something like contract price feed consumer and open currently brace brackets. So this is like the basic stuff. Save it, all good. So uh, we have a stable internet connection. That's the most important thing in these live demos for sure. OK, so the first thing, if you notice here, I will just copy paste this import, but or maybe I can even type it. Let's type it so you can guys have time to type it as well. So we ne basically need to import aggregator v3 interface. So import, this is the correct path. If you're doing this inside like Harhat or Brownie or whatever um, you know, framework, you will probably need to, not, not probably, you will need to install at chainlink uh, dash uh, slash contracts package and then to use it. But Remix will do this for, for ourselves, basically. So. Uh, chain link, inc, then contracts, SRC. Uh, so the version is 0 0.8, so v0.8 interfaces, and then aggregator v3 interface. Okay, you can see this aggregator v3 interface dot sol. So this is the import we need. Uh, if you need some time also to, to see it, I can wait. Or you can either go to docs.chain.link and grab that import from the official docs. And we can now follow the official docs, because this is the most basic example. And then I will build, build on top of it, basically. So let's see. So we here have aggregator v3 interface, which is internal price fit. This is a. Uh, this is basically a storage variable inside our smart contract, but it's going to be internal, so no um, automatically generated getters by its solidity. Uh, but you know, we can easily switch it to public, doesn't matter basically. And then inside the constructor, so constr sorry, Tor. just give me a sec. We have something like price feed, so we uh, instanced this uh, storage available to aggregator v3 interface and some address in this, uh, in this brackets, basically. So what's with this address type? Basically, if we look, uh, look up at this comment in the official docs, it says like uh, network colon, aggregator ETH USD, that's address. So this address is basically an uh, aggregator of uh, price of ETH in terms of USD on a common testnet. So what we need to do is basically to adjust this uh, for our use case. So if we go here, scroll up a bit, so you can see contract addresses on a various chains, and we are looking for Avalanche data feeds. So we need to go to Avalanche data feeds. I have this uh, tab open here, and here on an Avalanche data feeds page, you can see all of the currently available feeds on Avalanche mainnet and also on a Fuji testnet. So we're going to uh, build on, on a testnet, of course. So we can use maybe this um, AVAX in terms of USD as luck, like our, our aggregator address. So what it means is basically we're going to query the, the price of AVAX in terms of USD uh, inside our smart contract. So what I need to do is basically to grab this address, copy paste it, and put it here inside this aggregator v3 interface. Okay, so if I save this, should be compile. Uh, I can uh, do something like this so you can see. Okay, so this is like our first step, basically. We need to instance this price feed storage variable uh, to this address, which is basically AVAX in terms of USD price feed on an Avalanche Fuji testnet C chain. So uh, it's it's basically a different address on a different uh, you know price feeds, or also on a different chains. For for example, this same price feeds on Avalanche mainnet has a different address. And why was that? Because this address 
is basically an address of a smart contract which communicates with the decentralized Oracle, the chaining decentralized Oracle network. Okay. So uh, what's happened if I um, right click on this address? Basically, it will uh, uh, navigate me to, to the Snow Trace Explorer. So I can uh, see this smart contract. So it's, it's verified. So I can maybe um, read some some method and methods and I can see, okay, this price fix has eight decimals. Why was that? Because we are querying for a price of AVAX in terms of USD. So these stable tokens usually have eight decimals. So that's why this price fix also has eight decimals, right? If you're querying, for example, AVAX in terms of, like, let's say, BTC or ETH, it will have 18 decimals. So if you are dealing with multiple different price fits, you need to be aware of the decimals as well. So for example, uh, you can uh, imagine that here uh, we don't have like uh, ETH in terms of uh, USD in terms of ETH, for example, as a price fit, but we have like AVAX in terms of USD, you know, you can combine uh, two uh, different price fits in order to get one single. So if you give me a sec, so if you scroll a bit down, uh, you know, so we have like, for example, BTH, BTC in terms of USD, and we have like you're in terms of USD, but there's no like Bitcoin was the price of Bitcoin in, in euros, right? But you can combine two price fits to get it. But if uh, those price fits has different decimal numbers, you'll get inaccurate data because of the decimal points. So you need to take care of that as well. What else? We have this uh, also, um, this timestamp, simple getters, and there's like a latest answer. So this is like the latest answer, latest price, and we can even query this latest round data. So if I hit, hit query here, latest round data will basically going to show me what's the latest price. So this is the current price, this answer. If I copy paste it here, so this is the answer. I'll delete this as well. So because we said we have eight decimals, the current price is, uh, so I need to uh, just do like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and add comma. So the current price of AVAX in terms of USD is currently 37 point, point almost five, like USD, if you, if you round it up. Uh, so this is basically what, uh, what's the current answer. Okay, so if you did this, uh, the next step is basically to write our own function, which is going to be a view function, essentially. So if I, give me a sec, so uh, function, we can name it uh, get uh, latest AVAX USD price, and it can be public view, and it's going to return int. 256, not uint 256, but int 256. Be careful about that because decimals aren't uint uh, 8. So basically, if you try to divide them, you'll, go, you'll encounter into solidity error, compilation error, because you cannot uh, perform mathematical operations on, on a two different types. And why is that? Because some prices can go even below zero, can have neg negative values. In theory, like for example, oil can have negative value. I think during the pandemic, like the, the main peak of the corona virus, the, the price of oil was basically uh, minus one or something. So this is why the, the return types type is int 256. Okay, so we can uh, just now see that um, this latest round data, which we need to call, returns several different um, values like round ID, answer, started at, updated, and answer in round. So if you go here now to, sorry, to official example, you can see that also all of these parameters are, are listed here. So I can just copy paste them uh, like this. And then we want to have something like price feed dot, let's see the name of the function, it's latest round data. So latest round data returns all of these parameters. So if I type latest round data, and I, I only got, you know, a price because I don't really care about this other 
parameters at the moment for our bootcamp, for our workshop, so I can easily comment them out. And just we, we have this price, so I can return this price from my, from my function, like this. So the, the idea is that I will use this get latest AVAX USD price function, which is a view function, in my uh, other functions, like uh, I want to do lending or borrowing on my DeFi protocol, or I want to mint an NFT, but you know we want to set up that the price is $100, but we only accept AVAX because we don't believe in stable coins or whatever. So basically, I'm going to reuse this uh, simple view functions function, sorry, to, to get my, my price. And that's it. So this is like, like the first uh, minimal price fit consumer contract. And these 23 lines of code and solidity are enough for you to get the, the, the latest price of, of, of any given asset, basically, uh, provided by chaining price fits uh, to your smart contract. So if you have any questions, as I said, so because I see a couple of you are like doing code along with me, feel free to ask me now. I'll try to go to, to your stations to see like if this is working on your machine. But before that, let's try to deploy this, right? So I need to connect with my injected web three. You all know that. And I need to pr deploy price with consumer. I need to sign a transaction. And we are now going to wait a bit. I'll just collapse this again so you can see. And that's it. So I deployed my first price fit consumer smart contract, which basically consumes only one price fit at the moment. And that's AVAX in terms of USD using this single piece of code. Pretty simple, right? So if I try to test it, sorry, uh, just query this. And this is like the, the current and latest price. So if I. So it's like 37.3, basically. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hands. I'll wait for a couple of minutes for you to finish this. Yes? Uh, command S. This was a really nice question, actually. I see you. Uh, he asked me, like, if this is going to work in our local environment. No, because this address is on Fuji Testnet, right? And I said there will be several different addresses on several different chains. So the idea is that if you want to test this locally, you should mock this calls. And there's like a predefined set of mock contracts inside the chain repo. We also have several starter kits. So you can see actually in action how you can properly test this stuff. So this is the first thing. And the second, you can, you can always, if you're in the hard hat or you know, this powerful, more powerful environment than the Remix, Remix ID, you can fork the piece of your whatever chain is in a, in a concrete block. And then you can uh, actually uh, even um, better test this, this stuff. Uh, yeah. The same question. Perfect. OK, so are we all good on this? We were able to deploy? Yeah. Uh, how do we deploy? Uh, uh, sorry. How do we deploy? seven more minutes, so let's try to optimize this code a bit. So currently, 
as you can see, this price feed is a storage variable. So if I want to, you know, uh, use this this variable, basically I perform s load uh, operation, uh, which is quite costly on AVM, right? Because s loads are 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 quite expensive because you're interacting with the storage. It will be a better idea or more optimized idea if we read all of this um, or just this one, sorry, a variable from memory because memory is temporary and exists only uh, at the moment of um, interacting with our function and the storage is like persist. So what I can do now here is basically I can do something like this. So I, I should comment this, by the way, so don't, uh, to avoid uh, confusions. And I can do something like aggregator v3 interface and then like copy all of this because I want to, uh, you know, um, make this price fit variable one more time. And, and that's it. I will also comment my constructor as well because we don't need it. And now we are performing M load operation, which is uh, quite cheaper than S load as well. And this should work uh, quite fine with your smart contract, right? It's basically the same thing, but you're now reading from the memory and not from storage, and you're saving on gas, right? So, so this is the first, the first optimization that I can make. And let's try to redeploy this smart contract, why not? So I'll collapse this. Once again, ejected Web3 environment, connect your MetaMask with the Avalanche testnet, Fuji testnet, so you need to be connected on the same, the same network as, as you want to deploy it, basically. Uh, then I want to deploy my price feed consumer, so select the name of your smart contract, not this imported aggregator V3 interface, and basically hit deploy. And sign transaction, of course, as well. And ideally, let's wait for a couple more moments, but we'll uh, receive the same output out of this function. So from the client side or user side of you, it's basically the same. You can still query the price. You can see how price changes, basically, by the way. And, uh, but uh, it's much more cheaper, right? Because we are now reading from memory. OK. Any questions about this? Yep. So this was the 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 basically optimization uh, with this price fit. But if you look uh, carefully, I mean, uh, we are querying only one price, and that's AVAX in terms of USD. So this smart contract is not so modular, right? We just have a function to query this price. But what if we want to support support multiple tokens, price, whatever, like all of them, if that's possible? So. Once again, if you go to uh, data feed, so for uh, Avalanche testnet, we have this one available. So because it's testnet, you know, you have just a several um, aggregators because like it's a test environment, just a proof of concept that your, your logic is working and then you can switch to mainnet where you have like a bunch of others. But as you can see, so if I, because I hard coded my AVAX um, in terms of USD uh, price feed here, what I can do is basically I can pass it as a function argument. I just need to uh, take care that I don't pass some unsupported um, unsupported price width, and that's it. Like so, what I can do is basically I can delete this hard coded address because this is just an address type in Solidity, right? So I can delete this. I can pass this address as uh, let's name it price feed address, shall we? And then 
I just going to pass it here, so price feed address. So now it's not hard coded, but I'm passing this price feed address as a function argument. And then I can scale it to use all of this uh, on Avalanche testnet available uh, price feeds. But you know, as I said, on a mainnet, there is much more of them. And you know, if during time Chainlink had some more price feeds, uh, your code is basically uh, ready because you can scale it um, by passing this this value, basically. So I can just so what I did, I deleted this hard coded value, passed this um, function parameter address type, solidity address type, and, and that's it. And use that that passed argument. So I'll try to now to redeploy it one more time. Again, injected web price fit consumer, and then I'll hit deploy. I need to sign this transaction one more time. And uh, we're going to wait for a couple of more seconds. And then, yeah, it's deployed. So if I now want to call this get latest, not AVAX USD, but just get latest price, let's rename that quickly, shall we? I, I need to pass uh, the address of, of, this, of, of this aggregator feed, sorry. So I can just pass it right this. So it's just up to you to, to take care that, uh, that we do not mistakenly pass some, some address that is not supported. OK, so we, get, we got one more time the price of AVAX in terms of USD. But what if we want to, be, to see like the price of Bitcoin in terms of USD? So I just need to pass this address right now as my function parameter. If I did a copy paste well, I did. So this is the price of Bitcoin in terms of USD. So if you cannot see it, well, I can just copy paste here to zoom it a bit. But basically, again, uh, USD has eight decimals. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then comma. So this is the current price. Uh, not too bad, right? But if we want to query terms of Bitcoin in terms of ETH, in terms of Ethereum, we should receive a different value, right? And it is. And you can see that this number is quite bigger. Why? Because this, let's confirm this, but basically uh, this aggregator has how many decimals? I assume it's 18. Yeah, 18 decimals. So the price is basically 1, 2, up to 18, and then at comma, you, you got that. But this is the price for what Bitcoin in terms of ETH, Ethereum, not USD. So there is a several, uh, several price fits available on a testnet, as I said, much more than on a, on a mainnet for sure. So this is the, the last modification that we did to our smart contract. We are right on time. So if you have any final questions, I'll try to answer them now. Yes. Any other non-data questions, please? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I just okay. Uh, what is the uh, okay. Yeah, potentially you can combine multiple feeds to grab it, we are not, uh, or uh, you can either uh, uh, start your own price feed, so any, anyone can participate in a decentralized Oracle network at, at the moment. Just, you know, um, you cannot do it by your own. There needs to be like a consensus of nodes, and then you can have like a, a new price feed, basically. Uh, I think the easiest way for you as an individual to just go to our Discord, and that's it, because we have a dedicated channels for this. Uh, I will come to you uh, after after this. I have a couple of more slides, actually, just to, to wrap this up. So yeah, as I said, we did this in Remix ID, but if you want to go even further, we have a several different star kits for Truffle, Brownie, Harhat, Harhat with TypeScript. Also, we recently added Foundry Adapt Tools, so there's like six in total star kits. Uh, they cannot all uh, be on this slide, so there is just three of them. Uh, and as I said, you can see here how we test basically uh, these price fits and also our other services for, like VRF and Keepers by mocking them, by forking mainnet environments, etc., etc. 
uh, uh, yeah, where you can learn more. Uh, we have the kicking documentation, so docs the chain of link. This is this is basically the the website we used for this workshop. So I was just constantly looking at docs the chain that link. This is the official documentation. Also, we have uh, our blog, so blog the chain that link. Several blog posts uh, on various topics, technical, non-technical. Uh, we have like um, I don't know. Uh, hands-on tutorials as well as you can just follow up uh, um, reading these blogs. If you're more like a visual learner, let's say, we have uh, our uh, Chainlink YouTube channel. So there's like a ton of uh, live workshops or pre-recorded workshops for you to check it out from like uh, basic stuff like first lit smart contract or run a Chainlink node to more advanced like uh, security and smart contracts in general, like tips and tricks, auditing tools, whatever. Um, and yeah, if you to answer your questions, so this is the link to, to our Discord chat, this is the link to starter kits, to documentation as well, to hackathon resources, because our uh, spring hackathon is currently running, so we have a ton of educational content as well for the hackers, but it's free for everyone, so you can consume it from this slide. And basically that's it. So if you have any further questions, I will try to answer you, because we are just on time. Uh, if you're not, I'll talk to you now about the compilation error. Uh, yeah, thank you all of you who actually participate in the, in a like um, hands-on workshop, whatever. You completed your first officially <laughs> smart contract developer bootcamp in under 30 minutes. So kudos to you. Thank you.